Welcome to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. Good afternoon to all of you listening, depending on where you are in the uh, the great world, the U.S. of A. Simon Provan, Baxter Colburn, as we mentioned. We have a great show in store for you today. We're here on Thursday, as for some of you that you know, is when we record the show. We normally do it on Wednesdays, but uh, had to move things around. Simon was off busy being famous, as he always was. <laughs> now, Simon, you were, you were off doing some acting on Wednesday, were you not? I was. I was uh, very honored to be playing the role of Jesus, actually, in an oh. Easter series film that I'm doing with uh, Salty Earth Pictures. Okay. Out in the, the great movie landscape of Fort Atkins in <laughs> Wisconsin. Where's that? I, I, is that? Is that close to Hollywood? I've, I've heard they're very... It's very about similar. you know it's about two thousand miles away, so okay. relatively speaking, fairly close. I mean, two thousand for Jesus, you know, for years, two thousand right. miles. Hey, there you oh, go. Very oh, nice. I, I see you there. I see what you guys did. You know, I've heard your producers are very smart guys out there. Yes, they are very. That's very fantastic. Well. well, you are all are very smart as well for listening to us here on Two Up Front because we've got a fantastic show in store for you today. We've got uh, former. Uh, New England Revolution, Chicago Fire, and Colorado Rapids uh, player, and now Carolina Railhawks player, Wells Thompson, with us on the show today. And we've also got the foot golf USA president, Roberto Balestrini, with us as well. He's on a little bit later on in the show. Simon and I are going to react to all the opening action of Major League Soccer's Crazy Soccer Sunday. 20 teams all playing, 10 games. It was it was a lot to handle opening day. But before we get to all that, we want to remind all of you that you can find us on Sports Radio America on Fridays from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time and on TuneIn as well. Go and check us out there. You can hear three hours of the show. Even though we do record the show a day or two earlier on in the week, that's the best time if you want to go back and hear all the great things that we said. And you can also get the show on demand, though, on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com. Yeah, you can also find us on social media. We are on Facebook. Book Two Up Front. We are on Twitter at Two Up Front Soccer. Also have our personal Twitter pages at Simon Provan at Baxter Colburn. Yes, indeed. And if you ever want to email us, you can at Two Up Front Soccer at Gmail dot com. All right. Well, I know our first guest is on a wee bit of a time constraint, Simon. So I want to make sure we get to him right away. So with that being said. Anybody that's ever worn the red, white, and blue of the New England Revolution is automatically an awesome person, so <laughs> I'm sure this is going to be a fantastic interview already. So, Wells Thompson, sir, welcome to the program. How do you do, guys? What's up? Oh, not too much, Wells. We are excited to have you here on the program. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you, you've had a little bit of MLS experience. You've got an MLS Cup title to your name as well, so I feel like we are very honored to be speaking to such a high title Absolutely. holder. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and I'm super even more honored that uh because i, I know that um you played Jesus, man. That's awesome. Cool. I know, uh, I know. I, I feel very uh, unworthy to be even in the same <laughs> studio as him, Wells. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I've been trying it out for years and then never given it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got the hairstyle there, for it, though. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, Wells, right now, um, for those of those um, that have been following your career and maybe just don't know a little bit, you've you've shifted around a little bit. So, can you kind of give us an update of where you're at right now in your career? Yeah. So, actually, where I'm at right now is uh, I have a brace on my leg, and I'm using crutches. I just came off surgery. I had uh, two weeks ago. I had hip surgery. So. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, kind of unexpected, a little bit last minute, but I struggled last year with. Uh, with an injury that no one could seem to figure out. We thought it was my back. We thought it was my hip. Um, so a little bit frustrating. Was limited a, a lot last year. Um, hmm. But thank God, I found uh, found a doctor who uh, found the problem and got it taken care of. So um, a little bit in limbo right now. A lot of uncertainty. Not sure what's going to happen. If I'll keep playing or um, or what I'll do. Hmm. Um, okay. I, I, I love to keep playing. I've loved playing more these past couple of years and having a long time. And so I hope that's in, it's in God's plan for me to do that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, being able to uh, to get back out on the field, that was a hard thing for me, too. I uh, had a foot surgery my freshman year of college, and it was very difficult to know whether or not I was going to be able to get the chance to get back out and play college soccer, and ended up realizing that because of the severity of the injury that uh, I enjoyed walking and dancing a little bit more with my wife than uh, being able to play soccer. Yeah. As much as I, I love soccer, and it's you know it's gotten totally. me all over the place, but soccer, it's, it's such a short time you know in, in, in your life, and you want to you want to make sure you've got the rest of your life to do with the things with the people that you want to spend time with as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think it's, uh, honestly, I told my wife the other day that like, this might be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. It's, uh, it's given me a tr- tremendous amount of perspective, you mm. know, and I'm just thankful that uh, in, you know, several months that I will be able to walk again, a, a privilege that not a lot of people are afforded. That is true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Well, Wells, we're speaking with Wells Thompson here on Two Up Front. Yeah, Wells, uh, you know, talking about recovering and everything. Um, looking back, though, on, on your career thus far, 
you've been you've been with uh, some championship teams, which is pretty awesome. You know, you raised the the Open Cup trophy in 2007 with the Revolution, Woo! Uh, the old Super Liga, which I was a huge fan of. By the way, I love that tournament where yeah. you know MLS versus Liga MX teams. And of course, as Baxter mentioned at the top of the show here, that. You also raised the MLS Cup with Colorado Rapids. So I wonder if you can give us a little perspective on, uh, you know, being able to raise that many trophies in such a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, I've been blessed, man. Um, <laughs> I never thought I'd play a day of professional soccer in my life. Huh. So just, to be, just to be drafted and play was, um, was awesome. But being drafted, the Revolution, um, historically such a great team, um, uh, with a, a lot of great players, you know, Ralston, 12 minutes. Calvary Joseph, Jay Heaps, a lot of those guys. So I was really kind of submerged into a, um, a championship environment where guys kind of knew what it took to win. You know, a little bit unfortunate, never won them last couple of them, um, but did make it to the finals. Our, uh, that same year, we won the U.S. Open Cup. So, yeah, you know, I think coming from a, a college program like Wake Forest and uh, just a phenomenal job that the coaches did at Wake Forest, they, they teach such a – they, they teach you how to excel uh, beyond college soccer. Mm. And I think that's why a lot of uh, players from Wake Forest come out and do so well. Um, so I think uh, going into the revolution, I think uh, I kind of knew what it take, knew what it took because of the, the coaching of, uh, of my college coaches. So, yeah, it's just very fortunate, man. I think it's, uh, it's a dream come true to win any trophy and to have multiple to your name. Is, mm. Uh, it just makes it that much better. And I think going off of that too, Wells, you talked about how Wake Forest kind of prepared you not only for soccer but kind of for the rest of your life as well. I think we're starting to see a lot more programs across all divisions start to do that because with, his, with all the injuries that are happening in sports right now, players are realizing that you know you could be the, the best player ever but have an injury cut you short and then all of a sudden you're sitting at 24, 25 years old with you know what you thought was going to be a great long you know 10 15 year professional career suddenly gone because you know that one tackle went wrong or that header i mean for taylor twelman unfortunately he just was going for a header and keeper missed and punched him in the head and he had a concussion and decided you know never to play again you never know what's going to happen yeah absolutely i mean you never know um you never know if your job's going to get taken you never know if you're going to get hurt you never know uh, really what's going to happen and I saw that often when I was in the league and just as a professional player you see guys have phenomenal careers one year and then the next year they're gone you know or a couple of years later you don't know or you don't see them in the league and um, they've retired or moved on because of injury or because of just uh, you know not finding a job um, that's something that I was always aware of you know I always knew that my time could come at any moment mm-hmm. so um, I just tried to work as hard as I can and uh, as hard as I could and, and thank I was I was given um, you know, nine years to date uh, to be a professional soccer player. So, and you're right, man. And both y'all are right. There is life after soccer, and it's, it's such a short period of your time and of your life. And, mm. um, but also, there's this one thing called aging. We're all aging. <laughs> and we're all dying. True. Some of us just a little. Some of us just a little bit faster than others. And I think, uh, you know, I've been so thankful. I've, I've had three surgeries in three months. Wow. Um, but they've all come at the end of my career. I've never really struggled with injuries throughout my career. And yeah, yeah. So if I could choose. If I could have it one way, I'd have it this way. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit off the field. You know, I, I love looking at, uh, there's a website out there, folks, called wellsthompsonsoccer.com. Uh, every picture on here, Wells, you've got the biggest smile on your face. <laughs> Um, yes. You know, I, I love reading about players who are giving back to the community. Uh, we do you a disservice if we didn't allow you some time to talk about what you're doing off the field and especially mm-hmm. with the Joy Fund. Yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I believe that too much is given, much is expected. And as a, um, as a, uh, a white uh, American male in America, you know, I mean, I'm in the top 1% of the world and I've been given a tremendous amount. So. Um, and I haven't always lived my life this way, you know, I was a, I was a screwed up kid, I got really involved in drugs and alcohol as a kid, and um, as we all do, it kind of, sometimes it takes us, but we have to learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but uh, I started uh, I started following Jesus when I was uh, in college, and, um, you know, he's, he's changed my life, and so I just try to follow him, I try to give back, and, you know, one thing I've realized is that life's not about me, um, it's about God, and it's about other people, and I believe that the the um, the uh, the uh, what am I trying to say here? The uh, magnitude of a life is determined by the how much how much you give back. Um, I believe that giving back produces joy, produces thankfulness, 
excuse is gratitude, and then ultimately that's really what it's about. Mm. You know, when I think about my life, and I think in, in the things that stand out and the things that are most important to me, it's not necessarily winning the MLS Cup, not winning the Open Cup. Um, I believe that those things were much greater in my imagination than they were in reality. Mm. Um, and when I and what stands out to me as the most important is the relationships. You know, the relationships with my family, the relationships with my friends. So. Exactly. Yep. I just try, you know, Wes Thompson Factor is a tool that I use to love on kids and to share kids with the world. Um, whether that's, uh, I, I, I run PE for homeschool kids and hang out with them once a week. I do private trainings with soccer. Um, I run soccer camps. But everything I do, I, I believe that uh, I bring a spiritual impact to what I do. So John Wooden said it. I believe that it's way more important for a person to be a better person than it is for them to be a great athlete. Mm. And so that's really what I try to instill um, in the people that I come in contact with and the people that God puts in my life. Well, Wells, that's incredibly commendable and respectable, too, and I... I honestly wish that working in the industry, and I'm sure, I'm sure Simon can mention this, though, too, is the fact that you don't hear a lot of guys, unfortunately, in the professional sports industry, or even just in the professional sports media industry that are as open and honest about their faith, which is fantastic. Simon and I are both very open about our faith, and we, you know, we both have been saved and gone through a lot of different trials and tribulations in our life, but we've come out better men because of that, because of having Jesus as our Savior. So the fact that you're being using soccer and you're using your faith at the same time too it's a universal thing that is soccer that everybody knows about but you're also using a universal thing that a lot of folks are even depending on if they're in the small areas are still fairly familiar with as well and being able to bring those two things together i think is incredibly commendable so thank you for doing that yeah absolutely well hallelujah man we'll be in heaven together forever exactly we'll, have, we'll be on the same pitch finally together <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man that's awesome well, Wells, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about fast is uh, going along similar to with on your Wells Thompson soccer page, uh, there's two things. One, um, I want to know if you can share really fast about the time that you were kidnapped, which I think is fantastic. I mean, it's it's fantastic looking back at it, but the in context, I'm sure, is a little scary. Yeah, totally. No, I was, uh, like I said, I was a screwed up kid. I, I call, uh, I like to call it, I was a dumbass. And uh, <laughs> I was kidnapped from school. And so when I was like four. 13, 14, I got really involved in drugs and alcohol, and um, by the time I was 16, my life was really going nowhere, and I wasn't living at home, and so my parents had to, uh, you know, they, they had to intervene to, to try to save my life, and I was living with a buddy of mine, and so my, I just turned 16, my parents said, if you come home, we'll take you to get your license the next day, and so I thought that would be awesome, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I went home that night, and in the middle of the night, my dad came in and said, we love you, son, but you're going away for a little while, and he left, the next thing I know, two big guys come in. And I looked back at pictures of myself, and I was like four foot five, you know, with a bowl cut, and I had a hemp necklace with a mushroom in it, and I was like a real hard guy, totally kidding me. <laughs> I was not hard at all. I thought I was hard, but I wasn't. And so these guys, we wrestled. They obviously won. They handcuffed me, and they threw me in the back of a black taco uh, and drove me 12 hours up to New York in the middle of the Catskill Mountains. So mm -hmm. it was a school for, like, trouble teens, kids that had, you know, just gotten out of control, um, kind of had a correctional facility for them, and... I spent a year and a half there, and uh, it was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I'm thankful, beyond thankful, grateful for my parents for uh, taking that leap of faith, And it's, because it's, as hard as it was for me, it was a million times harder for them. Mm. And um, But but I know that, that that I went through that for a reason, and so that's part of what stops in soccer. I believe that, you know, we're all enticed by the world. We're all enticed to do things that we shouldn't do. And, um, so I'm just trying to be a voice in kids' lives, saying, hey, look, you don't have to do this. It's actually cool to study. It's cool to be good in school. It's cool to obey your parents and and that sort of thing. So I use what I've been through just to try to bless and help other people. But yeah, it was scary at the time, and I hated being up at that school for most of it. But I'm beyond thankful for being there. We're talking to Wells Thompson here on Two Up Front Soccer. Uh, Wells, we know you got a meeting to get to, but. I would like to at least ask you on a little bit of a lighter note here. I'm going to be honest. I was just doing some uh, Wikipedia surfing, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I see that you've been given the nickname El Diablo. Is that uh, is that yeah. true? And if so, well, how did that name come about? It's <laughs> so funny. I've been given a lot of nicknames. Of <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Reason, everyone wants to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, I was give, I was given that nickname in Chicago because I got three red cards in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I got a red card in the first team game, and then I played in a reserve game the next week and got a red card, and then I was back in the first team, and I got a 
rig hard. And so, needless to say, I didn't play too much more for Chicago. And he played at his family picnic and tackled his grandma, and then everybody just lost it, and it just kind of all went downhill yeah. from there. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, they should have uh, called you El Rojo instead of El Rojo. They said that seems a little bit more, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it's, a, you know, I think it's just a, play, a, lot of, a lot of it's a play off my faith as well, but. Mm. I like to spin it and just say I'm like King David, you know, I'm just a mighty warrior on the soccer field. There you sometimes go. I lose, sometimes I lose control because I'm a I'm a sinful messed up person still. Mm. All right, well, Wells, we really appreciate you taking the time today. Start really fast before we let you go as well. Um, are you following Major League Soccer at all this season? And if so, do you have a favorite uh, to maybe take home the cup this season? Um, I watched the Columbus Portland game the other day. I thought Portland was pretty solid. Um, I do, yeah, I do watch MLS. I do, I do keep up. I still have a lot of buddies in the MLS, and I love the game and I love MLS because of a lot of reasons. But um, do I have a favorite? I don't know. I, I like Port, Portland was really good the other day. So. Okay, well, that, that makes I'm, Simon happy. I like the way you think. But, but I'm always pulling from all the teams. I'm always pulling, especially. Uh, um, New England and Colorado, but I'm, I'm pulling for Chicago there too. Okay. Uh, Logan Paul is, is up there, so he's a great buddy of mine. So I'm always pulling for all the teams for sure. That's fantastic. Yeah, the uh, the mid 2000s New England Revolution teams, Wells, are the reason that I love soccer so much. Taylor Twellman's uh, bicycle kick against yeah. the Chicago Fire in the playoffs. That was the moment where yeah, I, I became that a fan. Was mine too. I had that cross. No one ever talks about it. Oh, yeah. No, right. I, I well, now it. we will. Yeah, I've, I've, say, I've watched <laughs> that highlight. It was a horrible, it was a horrible cross. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. It, it worked, though. I mean, you know, at, at the same time, and I, that's true. That now that you say that, I, I remember hearing the announcer say who that was, and I was like, "Oh, Thompson." I was like, "Oh, sure." I mean, at the moment, you know, I didn't didn't sink in, but so from from I guess I I owe you then, Wells, for my my fan. No, you so. don't owe me anything. I was really kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna go on. It was all him for sure. Well, the ball got there somehow, though. So That's right. I appreciate right. that. Well, Wells Thompson, thank you so much for taking the time today. Wells Thompson is a, an MLS Cup champion and, more importantly, a champion for Christ as well. So thank you so much, Wells, for taking the time on to Upfront today. And, sir. Wells, uh, we will definitely be saying some prayers for quick healing Absolutely. for you and, and, a, and a good healing that you can you can be back on the field sooner rather than later. Hey, thanks, guys. This is a tremendous blessing. I'd love to come back on. And, hey, if I don't ever see you again, I'll see you in heaven, all right? You got it, Wells. Sounds Thank awesome. you so much. Wells Thompson, everybody. All right, we are going to run to a break. When we come back, the She Believes Cup. It was very exciting. Alex Morgan continuing to make sure that she is making people forget that Abby Wambach was once a thing because she's scoring goals better than we've ever seen. We'll talk about that and so much more right after this. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America.
Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Just had an opportunity to speak with MLS Cup champion Wells Thompson here on the program of now the Carolina Railhawks. But as he mentioned, he's uh, been a well-traveled man and is now uh, surfing the couch for a little bit as he's on the... Hopefully the quick road to recovery. So what a, yeah. great to speak with him. Very well-driven and uh, exciting guy to talk to. You could tell he had a smile on his face the entire interview. Yeah, it was, it really, it is amazing. You, like I said, you go on his uh, website there, wellsthompsonsoccer.com, and you look at uh, all the pictures on there. This man is just beaming. And, you know, we both know that it's not always like that, you know. And, and yeah, of course. The Internet's going to be a little bit different. But listening to him... Seeing what he's all doing, there is pure joy in this man. And mm-hmm. how cool is that to see? Exactly. And that's the great part about it sometimes, too, is um, all we hear, and that's that's the hard part about it, is all we hear, all we hear is, you know, the negatives of this or the negatives of that or whatever. It's like, no, there are guys like Wells out there that play the game that, number one, smile when they do it and mm-hmm. enjoy what they do. And I understand that soccer brings out a passion, but he's got a, a bigger passion fueling him, which, right. I, which is fantastic. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Simon, we are transitioning over to the women's side of the game for just a little bit. Uh, the She Believes Cup is all said and done, and surprise, the U.S. won. What? They didn't just win. I mean, it was a dominating performance. They did. You and know, it's, it, it, yeah. The one thing we saw yesterday was they, they go down to Germany 1-0. If, I'm, if I got this correct, yes. that's the first time they were actually losing in this tournament. Yes. But they still come back once again. Alex Morgan doing her magic. <laughs> So U.S. Crazy. defeats Germany 2-1 to one to take the title of the inaugural She Believes Cup. We saw the same thing in, uh, against France with Alex Morgan. Mm-hmm. See, if I'm the Orlando Pride, I'm thrilled because our Alex Morgan has proven consistently that she can score in Florida. There, so there you go. I'm pretty positive that if I'm Orlando, I'm going, yes, any home game we have this year will be just fine. Well, and, you know, it sets them up well, obviously, for Rio yeah. and, and the uh, the Olympics. I mean, they... This yes. isn't the full team either. No, it's this not. This is not the full team. <laughs> and they're playing against England, France, and Germany, three of the best teams yeah. in women's soccer right now. And, and, th- and they beat all of them. They did. They beat them all handily. I mean, and I understand that, and I, I'd have to do some extra research to see you know, how uh, elite the squads were for the three other teams, but I know that the U.S. brought pretty much everybody that, that they could within reason. Well, and I feel like everybody brought all their big guns for right, the most part. Right. I mean, it's, it's not like the men's game yet where you've got these... Uh, huge leagues throughout the entire world you know mm-hmm. obviously you've got the NWSL in the US you've got a, a strong uh, women's Bundesliga yeah you've got a decent women's Premier League um but most of these players that are on these teams this is this is their this is their top team for them yes you know whatever country it is it is exactly and I just I don't want to get too far up but you you mentioning the Premier League thing I think it's interesting because we here in America have MLS and NWSL partnerships team partnerships within reason Portland and some of those other things but you look over in England, and that doesn't get talked about too much, at least that we don't hear about. Arsenal, Chelsea, United, City, they all have women's teams. Right. But, you know, they don't get talked about, but it's like, hey, the, the, the Chelsea ladies or the Arsenal ladies. like, And they're some good teams. That's where a lot of like the bread-and-butter English players play, which is cool, I feel like, because you've got the, the bigger brand attached to your organization. Right. I, I will say, and maybe this is me being a father of two girls, um, I do like the fact that the MLS clubs that have clubs in the NWSL actually give the women's teams their own name, their own yes. identity. Yeah, um, you know, there's it, there's almost that second class citizen type feel when it's like you said, the Chelsea ladies. You know, yeah. So I just wanted to. No, just I, wanted I to agree point with that you. Out. It's, yeah, it's because <laughs> it's the same thing. It's it's the FA Women's Premier League, right? You know, that's right. it's the same thing basically. It's I mean, it's the Premier League in England as well, but I mean. There's there's a little bit of difference, but you've got the sure. the Newcastle Uniteds and the the Derby County and the Nottingham Forest and the Blackburn Rovers and it's it's a lot of those team names that we're all used to to knowing, you know, from the men's side of the game. But it's flipping it over. But they still seem to have a, a fairly good following, though, from what I understand. And jumping on back to uh, this side of the pond, you know, there were along with winning the uh, the She Believes Cup. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Didn't have enough coffee apparently. <laughs> Have took, took a little while okay. to have for some words. Uh, <laughs> just yeah, whatever. I could go on all day about how I can't talk right now. Uh, Carly Lloyd yeah. earned her 220th cap. She did in that uh, game against Germany. Hope she's Solo. So, she's young. 193rd. <laughs> right? It's crazy. Um, but some cool things is that uh, Hope Solo did win the Golden Glove. She did. No matter how you feel about her off-field antics, she's still one of the top 
women goalkeepers Pretty in the sure world. Pretty sure she is the top goalkeeper right. in the world. <laughs> yes, yes. Can, I would be curious for someone to show me a better goalkeeper than Hope Solo right yes, now. Yes, yeah. And then uh, Alex Morgan very deservedly wins the golden ball as the MVP of the tournament. And uh, she also obviously got the golden boot for the tournament. So a great all-around performance. You know, you got some of these younger players stepping up for the U.S. Mm-hmm. All did fantastic. Exactly. Uh, so there is there is so much to be excited about for the U.S. women's national team. It is. Here's a few fast facts about the uh, the games that took place here this last week. The U.S. is 9-0 in 2016. They've scored 32 goals in nine games, and they're averaging over 3.5 goals per game. And yet... And yet, you can't get this game on TV. You have no. to either watch on the ESPN uh, app or you got to go into ESPN3.com. I, I'm sorry. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. You've got this women's team who is uh, one of the best teams in the world out of yeah. any sport Yeah, uh, on this awesome winning streak, and they're taking on the number two team mm-hmm. in the world in Germany. And yet, this can't get air on even ESPN2. <laughs> Come on, the women deserve better than that. I guys. agree. I mean, if this was a top four, you know, tournament for, like I said, if we flipped this over for the men's, you know, if we had the top four teams, whoever those four teams are right now, depending on who's paid off FIFA right now to be in the top four, right. <laughs> whoever those four teams are, this would be on at least FS1, at least. And the, and here's the thing, you know, it's not just because it's soccer that we're saying this or that we're, we're pushing some agenda here. It's just simply this is exciting soccer. It is, it's exciting. It's an exciting game to watch when you've got these top teams mm-hmm. and you know again they they deserve better coverage than than what they got for this so. i agree i absolutely agree i mean uh, we could go on and back and forth i'm sure about the whole you know well the women's game deserves more and it's how would you not give more to this because they're so good it's there's no way around saying anything you know in terms of like look this is the best team in the world <clears throat> why are you not giving them proper proper press Absolutely. And, and soccer is a world game this isn't like we're playing curling we're not playing women's basketball we're not you know volleyball like not to take anything from those sports right, right. but soccer is a international game the women just won the world cup and then they just go back and basically beat the same teams that they beat to win the world cup right. which was a highly you know publicized televised event and no one bats an eye about no. it. it were, and were they high scoring games? No, it was 1-0 1-0 2-1 2-1 well, actually is a, is a decently scoring yeah. game um but it was quality but it, soccer. But it was quality night. soccer, right. Exactly. Right. On a side note, though, Canada, the, the neighbors right above, they took home the, I never know how to say this one, the Al- Algarve, Algarve Cup? Sure. I'm, sure. I'm not sure how to say that either. Either way, and, it's and, the other women's tournament that happens. Yeah, and it's interesting that uh, the U.S. set up this She Believes tournament around this time because they have traditionally played yep. in the Algarve, or I think that's what I it think, might be. Sure. Sounds better than what I was trying to say. <laughs> we should we should actually like look up the stuff before we go on air. And, and <laughs> Can somebody get like a Wikipedia? Here, here we are being hypocrites, right? We're talking about, <laughs> hey, the women deserve better coverage. And then we don't know how to say one of the best tournament names in the world for uh, soccer. I like that. Sounds like a, a lotion. I have Algrave or something. Who else played in the... Uh, Somebody. Do you have that? Okay. Australia, I think. Okay. I don't know. Let me see who else. But I know Canada won. That was the big. That's the big. I think blow. France usually plays in that one. Yeah, as well, I mean USA, so France. I think the She Believes Cup was. I think because of the World Cup being sure. what it was, sure. and maybe those other teams wanting a crack at it. But from everything that I sense, though, about this little tournament, it didn't really seem like this was a let's go back and get the USA for beating us right. all. And like it was right. a, like, hey, women's soccer. I mean, it was She Believes. That was the thing. Like, yes. Promoting women's right. sports. Like, let's just go and have fun. And that's kind of what it seemed like it was overall. Kudos to the folks in Tennessee, by the way. Over 25,000 yeah. people attending that game. That and Nashville I know game. I know the, uh, the game last night, it wasn't massively attended comparing it to other uh, soccer audiences. Why thir- not? 13,500. But that, that was still a record for, uh, apparently, for uh, the women's game in southern Florida. Yes. And I've seen, so. I've been to a couple... Uh, couple of women's games down in South Florida and we've talked about back when Magic Jack was a thing and I know all of your wonderful opinions about them but <laughs> those games were still it maybe this is just because I'm a co-host on a nationally broadcast soccer show where I'm like how can you not go to these games like right. they are right there well that's a, that's always the big thing you know whether it's the women's game or the men's game is now, obviously, MLS teams are really starting to do well. I mean, yes. almost, you feel like there's a sellout in almost every stadium. Well, like Orlando. taking away the yeah. uh, revolution, but, you know, they need their no. own stadium. They but do. anyways, they do. Yeah, it's, it's always that argument of, I, we get, you know, that you're Premier League fans. I'm, I'm a big fan of Everton. Yeah. I try to watch them as much as I can. Mm-hmm. But if I have the opportunity to actually go to a, an MLS game, yep. I'm going to go because, you know what, ultimately, that's my league. And, and people saying... Uh, 
you know, well, the league needs to be doing better. They need to spend more money. When they do that, I'll go. They, <laughs> they will start doing that when their revenues increase. Yeah. And same thing with the NWSL teams. Well, if, I know? mean, and not to pull on going to NFL teams, too. If you were to say that for, you know, I always go back to these teams, but like the Cleveland Browns or the Detroit Lion fans saying like, hey, I'll be a fan of the team when they start winning. Well, those franchises are still around. Somebody, right. and they still right. put 60, 70,000 people in those stadiums every single game, regardless of how good the team is, like... You obviously have a passion for the team, and if you have a passion for something, you're going to make it happen. If I had been in Florida for these games, I would have done everything in my power to be at those games. Absolutely. Because right, how often right. you get to see the national team for any sport, really, right, play you know, right. in your backyard. I mean, every time every time U.S. comes to Chicago, I do everything I can yeah. to get down there for, for the game. Doesn't mean I can make everyone, and that's the thing, I understand. You know, uh, especially if games are happening on weekends, you got yeah. youth soccer going on. It's yep, always exactly. It especially like the middle of summer too. Like right. I, that's fantastic that Copa America is going to be an hour from us. You know, in Chicago, I think there's going to be two games down there or something like that. Am I going to get a chance to go down there? Eh, maybe, but anytime we get post May. It's so and, hard. And, you know, it's a little bit different story there, too, because you know those games are going to sell out of regardless. Of course, because of the Hispanic teams and because it's a men's well, game. Well, and, and it's the Copa America. It's the biggest tournament on the soil since 1994. True. You know, so. True. But, you know, something like this. But go. USA, yes. Germany. Yes. If they something are, like if USA, they are Germany, nearby, though. you should be going to go. these games, please. Especially in this. And maybe, maybe I've been out of the Florida soccer scene for too long because... Growing up in Florida for eight years, watching the women's game in Florida at the club level, high school, college, there are some incredibly talented women that come out of Florida to play soccer. I'm still very good friends with a lot of those ladies, too, that I knew growing up, but it's like the women's game is there. Like, go. Like, go right. and see the best, your your idols. You know, growing up, if I'm a, a young middle school girl and I know Alex Morgan's going to be playing an hour or two away from me, I'm going to be pulling mom and dad's sleeves saying, get me to that game. Right. I want to see my idol play. Especially when they're not going to put it on national television. Well, that's that's the thing, you know. It's and that it's doesn't one even thing. do it justice. No, no, it's one thing. It's one thing to not be able to go to the game, but it's another thing when it's not even really available to you exactly. on TV. You know, I've got a. We've had her on the show. My my eight year old Bethany mm-hmm. loves playing the game. Yeah, she has her own Alex Morgan jersey. Exactly. You know, and uh, I'm excited that NWSL seems to do better and better with their TV packages, so that she can tune in and watch this player named Alex Morgan, because that's what, you know, when I was a kid and there really wasn't a, uh, a professional league on TV, that was, it was hard for yeah. my generation to connect with soccer because yeah. we didn't really have, we didn't have guys to watch. Robert, you and Rob Stone yeah. were talking about that last week. You were right. saying you had to see like the PBS like game of the week and it was usually like an NASL game or some or random. Made in Germany. Yep, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, Bundesliga. This is, right. this is great, but it's not American soccer, but obviously we're miles past where that yeah. is now and yep. you can catch, all the NWSL games live on YouTube. They stream all the games live now, which is fantastic. And then, as you mentioned, with the upgraded packages as well, ESPN and FS1 have games as well, so that is good. So right. they're moving towards a better situation for that. Right. Uh, speaking of good things happening, the U17 women's national team, Yes, uh, they are hopefully bound for the next World Cup. They play Canada tomorrow in the CONCACAF semifinal, World Ooh. Cup qualifying. If they win that, they are in. Um, they've missed a couple of World Cups, so it would be great to see them back in there. Uh, on top of that, though, a little bit different. It also it only used to be two CONCACAF teams going. This year it's going to be three, so it's the semifinal winners and then whoever wins the third place match. So the U.S. team has a great opportunity Once again. To, uh, <laughs> to make the World Cup. <laughs> women's soccer. Like, yes, and, and, right. I, and people wonder, too, they're like, Baxter, you don't talk about women's soccer very often. Why are you getting so fired up? Because this is why I don't talk about it very often, <laughs> because I can go on for hours because I think it's stupid how little respect and how little publicity the women's game gets in our country because you said the U-17s, they're at the World Cup, and you hear about the U-21s and the U-23s and the, everything that's going on. Give those ladies some love. They deserve right, it. Right. If this was the men's team on any other level and any other country, oh, the men, the men, the men. Oh, come on. <laughs> I right, mean, it's, right. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes, it is. But but back on the positive stuff here, as we're talking about Wells Thompson and being positive and smiley. And exactly. <laughs> Cheers to you, Wells. US, Drink more coffee to you. The U.S. Women's National Team wins the inaugural She Believes Cup. Four, all four teams are in the top five 
of world soccer. That's what you want. And the U.S. takes the gold along with some awesome trophies to go along with that for personal players. So Mm. congratulations to the U.S. women's national team. Absolutely. All right. Well, coming up, Simon, we are going to hit the golf course, but we're not going to be bringing clubs with us. We're going to be bringing our feet as we chat with the American foot golf uh, United States president, Roberto Balestrini. He'll be with us on the other side of the break, so you're not going to want to miss that. So we'll be right back. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. All right, Simon. As we continue to move on with the program today, we've had a great show so far, and we've still got so much more to get to. A little fired up in that last segment about talking about the women's game. Uh, As we know, the U.S. women winning the She Believes Cup over Germany 2-1. So congratulations to the women of the U.S. women's national team. congratulations. We are excited to talk a little bit MLS later on as well. I've got lots to talk about for MLS opening weekend. I've got some thoughts on Simon and I are going to review our picks to see how well we did uh, with our opening predictions. Uh, just say it wasn't as pretty as we thought it was going to be. <laughs> but uh, not that many draws this week either. Yeah, so that right, was nice. Right. So we actually had a few clear-cut winners. So, But now we are going to head out to the green, as I mentioned, and chat with Roberto Balestrini. Of the, uh, he's the president of Foot Golf USA. Roberto, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. Now, Roberto, for those that don't know, uh, can you give us a little bit of a background on what foot golf is? Because for some folks, they might think that you just walk out to a golf course and kick a little golf ball around, but it's very different than that, is it not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Many people, they try trying to picture that. When <laughs> we introduced the sport in 2011, I said, wait a minute. So you had 22 guys. <laughs> oh, no, no. You don't have goalies. You don't have goalkeepers. You have it's a very small goal. Ball and- yeah. Now it's basically we play golf with a soccer ball. Basically, are the rules of golf nine or eighteen holes located on the fairways uh, of a regular golf course, and we try to um, make the nine or eighteen holes in the less number of kicks. Mm. So, it's, so basically, it's, it's, yeah, it's you go to the, to the tee box. You kick the long drive, then you do the approach, either one or two kicks, 
and then you do the putting. So it's a pass. You pass the ball to the hole. It's a 21 inches hole. Okay. On the fairway. So I, I had the opportunity to go and play uh, foot golf for the first time about two years ago. Once I, I heard about the the phenomenon coming around, and it was. Something like, for me, that's, that's played soccer for, for a long time. Hearing about this, I was like, well, this is such a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of it? And it's, 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 a, <laughs> it's so simple, but that's at the same time. Think, oh, my God. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it blew my mind because I was like, oh, well, I, well sure. Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense. So it's, it's grown to just a little bit more than just a, hey, let's go you know, kick a ball in a hole now. I mean... Like I mentioned, you are the president of the United States of, of foot golf, basically. So obviously, the game has gotten a little bit of popularity, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, uh, number one, to understand what foot golf is, um, is I mean, anyone who ever kick a soccer ball aimed to something, you know. Even and the the coaches has been training kids and, and players with. Uh, um, kick into uh, to plastic cones or, or to something. Back on the 1900s in Switzerland and Denmark and other European countries, they were playing on the parks aiming to the trees. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that blew up my mind. One day I saw a picture from Switzerland. They would play 8,000 feet, those guys kicking a soccer ball. Holy cow. You know? to any trees you may have right there on the Alps. I mean, it's amazing. But it was not until the year 2000 that uh, in the Netherlands, a uh, gentleman named Michael Jansen, which is now a very good friend of mine. Actually, that guy grew up here in the U.S. He went to high school in Sonoma Valley, California. Oh, really? He's a Dutch guy. Yeah. Small world. He, he runs a marketing firm in Europe with big clients, and he was with his uh, business companion, or his partner, uh, talking, I mean, brainstorming. And um, this guy uh, told Michael, you know what, my brother, he played, I think, for the Tottenham Hansburg in uh, England, and he said that after practice, uh, they compete with the other players to see who gets back to the lockers in the less number of kicks. Hmm. Because, well, that looks like golf to me. So um, they started working on it in 2000, 2001. And by 2009, uh, they rented a golf course in, in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. And uh, um, they brought um, I mean, 16, 20 uh, former uh, professional players. And um, they play nine hall of foot golf. Hmm. So um, people who was involved with that uh, tournament, they went back to that uh, to their countries. You know, in Europe, I mean, it's, I don't know how many countries you can put in California or in Texas. <laughs> right? <It's the> <laughs> you know, and uh, so they went back to Belgium, to Hungary, to other countries, and they start doing the same thing. Hmm. So back in 2008, I was living in north um, San Diego County, and it was an international match, a friendly match between uh, Mexico and Argentina. And um, and I was living very close, and I wanted to see Leo Messi. So um, I went to the hotel, and I spent half of my life in Argentina, so I speak the language. I talked to the Argentinian press, and they connected me with uh, Leo Messi, we took a picture, whatever. Three years later, I was watching TV and looking for a soccer game from South America, and I see this commercial about foot golf. Oh. And this is foot golf. So, I, I mean, living in Palm Spring area, which is the golf capital of, uh, in the United States, Yes, yep. Uh, that got my attention was Martin Palermo from Boca Juniors, Argentina, kicking a soccer ball in a better way. <laughs> so I asked my wife, and I showed that to her, and I started Googling, and guess what? The producer of that show was the same guys that I met three years before in North San Diego. <laughs> wow. It's a small world, my goodness. Yeah, and you mentioned that too. No, I mean, with so I, I talked to them, and they said, Roberto, you know what? This, we are in a few countries, uh, Argentina, the Netherlands, Hungary, and not much more. Hmm. And um, if uh, you would like to get involved, so to make long story short, I talked to Laura, my wife, wife which is a business 
woman and uh and I say, well, I would like to introduce a food court to the United States and say, dude, it's the United States, a new sport. We will spend the rest of our lives talking about food golf and we won't get anywhere. Exactly, yeah. So, but when she watched the video, she went nuts. She's coming from a, a golfer's a family. Sure. Her father and, um, and, and her two brothers are hardcore golfers. And knowing what happened with the golf industry, which is declining 1.3% every year in participation. Mm. Um, and so many uh, golf courses that in the 90s, for 10 years, they did one golf course a week. And now they are closing one golf course a week. Wow. Uh, and um, that made perfect sense. So, and we saw the opportunity of uh, introducing new demographics to the golf courses. And I saw the perfect opportunity, being born and raised in Argentina, playing soccer on the streets. It was, to me, the perfect opportunity to kick a soccer ball in a golf course. What a better place to be than a golf course. <laughs> exactly. Like a Who doesn't manicure. love a golf course? So, yeah. So um, we started in, in, in Argentina, Netherlands, and Hungary helped me. Uh, to start here, a few guys here and there, and uh, and we start making a few calls. Can you imagine me calling golf courses with my <laughs> accent, asking those guys to allow me to kick a soccer ball on their fairways? Hmm. You know, they talk to me like I had two heads. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so we decide to stop soliciting, and we start marketing pictures, and you know, and creating our website. Um, which you can find on footgolf.net, F-O-O-T-G-O-L-F.net. And uh, then we start getting call-ins. And today we have uh, 465 courses in 48 states, District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, and we also help to launch uh, Foot Golf Canada, Foot Golf uh, Puerto Rico, and Foot Golf in Mexico. That's incredible. My goodness. So you've been uh, just a little busy the last couple of years then. Well, for four years, I had seriously <laughs> took one day vacation. I mean, maybe you should, at, uh, uh, three a.m. Maybe Europe, so we jump. <laughs> so you should uh, you should relax. Then I, I know that the, the state of Florida has some really good foot golf. Maybe you should go play there and just you know take a load off and relax for a while. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I, I even see the U.S. Pro Am. There will be a U.S. Pro Am in Florida, uh, September third through the sixth in Orlando. Yeah, somebody told me that Baxter is going to register for that. <laughs> you know, I would love to. I mean, my um, I'm originally from Naples, Florida, so maybe I can try to work it uh, to get back down to, to Florida and come play, because I, I love foot golf, honestly. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know what? It's way more fun than you think, mm -hmm. but it's way more difficult than you think. Exactly, sure. yeah. Right. That was the right. big thing. Yep. When I took some friends to play after it, I had gone and played one or two times, and I was like, hey, you should come play. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we played soccer and, you know, whatever for a couple of years. We'll be, we'll be just fine. And then they got out there like, oh, my gosh. I was like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not as the easy as you think. The main difference is, I mean, when the American Food Got League, which is the governing body for the sport of foot golf yes. in the U.S., the exclusive member of the Federation for International Foot Golf. Um, when we launched that in 2011, um, I had never played foot golf before. Mm. And the first time I tried, I said, okay, you know what? I thought that I was going to kick the ball and land the ball 60, 70 yards, whatever. Yeah. So I kicked the ball at... They went at the 20, 21 <laughs> yards. Even my wife with her legs, a leg kick harder than me. <laughs> so, and uh, it is difficult, but you know what? Uh, the beauty is you learn how to visualize the course. Mm -hmm. When you play soccer, you play in a flat surface. You run, you pass the ball, it's a limited space. Yep. And you need another 21 guys to play with you. Mm. Okay? So um, when you play foot golf, you get to the course, and then you see that you have the water hazards, you have the trees, and, and just you and yourself, you know? And, I mean, you get there, you pay your tea time, 15 bucks, 20 dollars, whatever. You go to the Rich Cartman in Orlando, you pay 90 bucks yep. to play foot golf. Right. Okay? Hey, but come on, you are on the Rich Cartman. You know, exactly. You know, that's, that's beautiful picture, down there. You know how many new Facebook friends you can get with that? <laughs> so, 
And, uh, but you get that to the golf course, you pay whatever, let's say 20 bucks, <clears throat> and you have two, three hours to kick the soccer mm-hmm. ball around, and you walk, and it's, 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 it's fantastic. It is. And to me, it's the best game ever invented. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you really fast as we're speaking here with the, uh, the American Foot Golf Association uh, president, Roberto Balestrini. American Foot Golf League. A league. I'm so there sorry. Is, American Foot yeah. Golf League. Forgive me. Perdona. Yeah, uh, if you go online, if, if, I mean, you will find, I mean, you don't even have a space to type the word foot golf. Now it's exploring everyone, or everybody open a quote mm-hmm. association. Even my grandmother open Grandma Foot Golf Association. But they are not <laughs> really association. No, yeah, they are just one the or league. Two yes, operation. so the American Foot and Golf League. So forgive me about that. Yeah. You have a, an exciting event though coming up at the end of March, uh, where you have some some interesting and fairly notable uh, female soccer players that are going to come out and play some foot golf. Can you tell us a little bit more about that event? Yes, yes. It's, I'm very, very excited. Abby Wambach and Julie Foley, they will play against uh, two uh, Japanese. Uh, team players or team member of the uh, um, Japan um, Soccer Association, uh, people that play uh, on the final of the World Cup 2015 in Canada, mm-hmm. they will meet with uh, four players from the Ladies Professional um, Golf League of America, from the LPGA. Oh. This event is one of the five major tournaments on women's golf. In America, okay, uh, it's, it's one of the five majors. It's, it's got a great coverage, great history, and having it's like a, the master for women. Yes, the A and A inspiration. I mean, having the possibility, you know, to bring, um, I mean, Abby and Julie to um, um, play a, a foot golf with the American Foot Golf League um, uniform in such a scenario, which is in Mission Hill Country Club in Rancho Mirage, California. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. That is beautiful. It's, it's exciting, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really exciting opportunity. And, uh, and I, was, I was telling Simon yesterday, too, after our conversation, Roberto, that you, uh, you're, you're flying us out for the event. Is that, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm sending my friend Jose with a car. Oh, perfect. He'll be here, he'll be here <laughs> soon, I'm sure. You guys up. <laughs> and, I mean, I drove once. You guys in Texas, right? Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And Wisconsin? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> no more espresso coffee for me this morning. Okay. Yeah, and Wisconsin. You know that everything started in Wisconsin? That's what I... What yeah. Would call the first tournament we organized, the first tournament in North America, was played in Chula Vista Resort, Wisconsin ah, Dells, yeah. Wisconsin. Mm, sure. It's a beautiful place. We're about... We're yeah, about, it's we're a beautiful about an... place. And then a few weeks later was in Madison, Wisconsin. I remember at the time... Juan Fernandez, which is the um, director of marketing of the ASGL, he lives in, in Madison. Okay. And uh, he made all the connections. So 24 players from the U.S., uh, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Bulgaria, and now is the president of the Federation for International Football, Michael Connor. He flew from uh, London to to Wisconsin Dells to play foot golf with us. Wow, my goodness. Well, yeah. it's obvious that the, that the game is growing. So, Roberto, we got to run, unfortunately, but thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, if people want to find out more information about foot golf or the upcoming tournaments, uh, what website and social media platforms can they go to? Thank you very much, and have a beautiful day, guys. Thank, thank you so you much. We Bye. appreciate it, Roberto. Have a wonderful day, sir. Yes, Roberto Balestrini, a fantastic man that we... Uh, Got the wonderful opportunity to speak with here on the show. And uh, as we uh, continue to head to a break, though, really fast, you can find all the information by going to afgl.us. Uh, go and check those out. You can see all the great courses, the American Foot Golf League. And Roberto Balestrini is the president of that. One little fact that did not come up during our, uh, during our little talk there is uh, the U.S. actually has a World Cup winning men's team. Do they? Yeah, the, wow. uh, the Team USA won the, uh, were the world champions in the in the inaugural uh, fifth gig FIFG fifth gig. 2016 World Hopefully Cup. Hopefully that's not corrupt. Yeah. Fifth gig in <laughs> FIFA. Yeah, they've got some great up- upcoming tournaments, though, all sponsored by Adidas, Standard Golf, all of those other fantastic things. All right, well, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, the moment you've all been waiting for, our MLS segment, we can finally 
get at all the action that happened this weekend, and we'll uh, we'll see how Simon's team did, we'll see how my team did, and uh, we'll be a little honest about how certain things happened over the weekend as well. And Simon wants to make fun of me because Jermaine Jones is at the Colorado Rapids now. So I don't want to make fun of you. Ah. No, I don't want to make fun no, of you. You don't want to make fun no, of me? No, I think okay. my... My view might surprise you, Baxter. Uh, all right. Well, we'll find about all that out on the other side of the break. You are listening to Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Baxter Colburn. I'm Simon Provan. All right. So we've had a, a fairly talkative show today, Simon. We've done most of the listening because we've had some great guests on the show. Absolutely. We just uh, chatted with the AF... L. GL F A F G L. There's so many, too many letters. Too, <laughs> too much, too early. I, Roberto had too much coffee. I haven't had enough coffee apparently. And plus, Baxter, let's let's be honest. You're working basically third shift. True. With, uh, over at the uh, I'm running radio station hours of sleep right now. Yeah, yes. yeah. So it's it's excusable. Exactly. What's inexcusable is the guy who's had seven hours of sleep and he still can't form <laughs> words properly. Hey, it happens. That's why the folks love us at home, though, right? We give them quality <laughs> entertainment that, uh, and we're honest about ourselves, right? Yes. Exactly. That's the great part about it. All right, Simon. So um, there's a couple of different ways that we need to go for this segment because we need to talk MLS. We need to review how the weekend went. We need to review our predictions. So I feel like the best way to probably go is to incorporate predictions slash and then talk about the games as well. Sure. You know, kind Sounds of good thing, to me. thing of that nature. So. Um, just, just throw whatever at me. Let's throw do whatever. It. We got to do a fifty-fifty-two. We'll do that on Jermaine Jones. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. We'll get. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. All right. I don't know if we will, folks. I'm just. I'm. Who knows? I'm. I'm playing producer for a second. There. That's fine. What's the worst that could happen? That's oh where the boy. rest of us are just like, ah, what? The, what does the, he say? We do know the worst can happen is me starting a show going by. Uh, hey, hello, hey, ladies everybody. and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, remind me never take a sick day again. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're fine, Simon. You're fine. All le- part of the learning curve. Exactly. All right, Simon. MLS is officially back. I am so excited. What a weekend. Woo! My goodness. Uh, goal after goal after goal. A record. 36 goals in opening weekend. And I have never heard so much complaining, number one, about poor defensive play, and number two, about there were too many games. Too many games. I have heard complaints. What a wonderful world that we live in. I have in, heard though. complaints. I mean, because there were too many games on the same day. That's what the. Com- uh, but I've I have heard, and I'm not going to name names. But I, I've listened to some other larger soccer shows that talk about the American game as well. But that was the biggest recurring theme that I kept hearing. I don't remember the last time 
I have heard an NFL fan complain about too many games on a Sunday. There are 32 teams, and all of them, there's at least 14 games, 15 games a Sunday, depending on if there's Usually, a Thursday night yeah. game, because then there's a Monday game as well. And, it's and, an average and now is, there's a Thursday game, but Yeah, still. so there's, there's 14, if it's a regular season with no bye weeks, there's 14 games on a right. Sunday. And, and, then, and if you're an NFL fan, you love it. Heck yeah. I love this. Yeah. I love have, knowing... It makes great destination TV. Exactly. I'm all for it. I am. Uh, you know, I was a little. Yeah, I was a little taken aback by that when I uh, when I heard that from from some of the folks that were talking. And look, there's there's just some people you just can't please. Is what it gets down to. Which That's is really weird. what it is. It is, and it's like, yeah, that, that was the big thing. I was listening to these people, and they're like, yeah, it's uh, just too much soccer. I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, you know that, but at the same that, time, you flip it around. And you're like, "Why is it America soccer? Uh, you know, purposely publicized?" And I'm like, "Oh, stop! Right. <laughs> no, you can't yeah. have it both ways. You got to create. You know that Batman and Robin meme yes. that always pops up on Facebook. That's you know, there's not there's, enough. There's soccer. too much soccer. Exactly. <laughs> it's like enough. That's fantastic. Should we go back to soccer in Germany or whatever that was? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh my uh, gosh. Anyways, anyways, let's get back to uh, to the topics at hand. Sure, here. if you'd like to. You know, so so you want to throw in the predictions with the yeah. Reviews. Well, let's let's uh, yeah. So we'll go that route. I feel like that would be a good move to go. All right, all right. So uh, game number one: uh, the Red Bulls and Toronto FC. Toronto taking the two nil victory. Giovinco saying, "Hey guys, remember me? I'm kind of a big deal. You know, did really good things last year and did that again." Listen, we talked about Toronto FC doing well in the off season with not spending huge amounts of money, stupid money on, mm-hmm. on players that they shouldn't it be. You know, they got Drew Moore in there, a uh, bunch of other great names, and of course, you do have Giovinco. Mm-hmm. What was most surprising to me about this game, though, is the underperformance of the New York Red Bulls. Yes. fantastic way for TFC to start their eight game road trip mm-hmm. with not only a win. But a decisive two zero shutout yes. over over who we think is probably the best team in the East, or we thought was pretty be positive. The best team I picked in the them East. to win MLS Cup, and I know it's still way too early. So everybody, calm down if you're saying you're already getting off the Red Bulls bandwagon. No, I'm not. No, Neither no. of us are. It's it's just surprising that it is. they would lose in such a fashion. Exactly. And I heard a great uh, comment the other day saying that hey, Toronto won opening week last year and then lost five straight. So. Don't freak out too bad, right? You know, right. I mean, because Toronto's got eight away games. They're hoping to get at least eight points from those eight away games. They're mm-hmm. already three points, all the, three points there. You know, this upcoming week uh, they play New York City FC, so they're keeping it in the keeping it in the city, basically. And you know, and we'll it, see. And I just want to clarify my statement about underperformance. Please. I mean, the Red Bulls did dominate this game. They did. You know, up there, until, were, there but were moments. Up until the last 10 minutes. The thing they couldn't do was get that ball in the back of the net. And when kind you, of when, important. When you have a Bradley Wright Phillips playing up top, you expect that to happen. Get after it. But then they just fell apart in the last 10 minutes, giving up a penalty kick, which, of course, Giovinco had no problem putting in the back of the goal. That's what he does. Uh, and, then, and then they get a, a stoppage time goal there, which... Giovinco also assisted on to uh, exactly. Marky Del- Delgado. He had, a, he had a fantastic day overall, and that's what you want. And that's always the uh, the concern week one. It's like, all right, you're the league reigning MVP. Okay, good. Yes, no, wonderful. Hello. Now, are you going to actually play like the MVP again, you know, coming out of the gates? And he did, which I think was a reassurance to the TFC fans because, as you mentioned, they didn't go out and get any other crazy dynamic players offensively. Right. And now, Baxter, let me just jump a little bit off topic Please. here. Is we're both playing fantasy this year. We're yes. doing the uh, MLS Fantasy Manager. And uh, look, you, I, did you have G. Vinco on your lineup? I did not. Okay. No. Well, then I won't say the word I was going to use. Um, it's not smart of you not to have G. Vinco in your, in, yes. your, in your front line there. Um, I'm happy to see I did, and I was <laughs> very, well very happy to see him get that goal and oh, assist good. on opening day. I actually thought it was a little bit of a risk playing him, knowing that Toronto was on the road. Yes, uh, that's, the, it, that's the one reason I did not. Right, but it ended up being a, a good thing. And I, I just think Giovinco is one of those players that if you are playing fantasy and you have room in your salary cap to grab you him, you know he's going to get, get him. Ball. Yeah, you know he's going to see the ball, and he's a uh, set-piece guy as well, well, he and Bradley. Now, who I wish I would have grabbed, and I almost did, was uh, Plata from RSL. Plata. Yes. Two goals, one on either side of the half. Yes. Looked like RSL was going to take this game. This was probably the most exciting ending of a game. Yeah. As Orlando scores two goals in stoppage time, a minute back-to-back. Kyle Laren with you one, can't Adrian write Winter with like the that. other. Uh, Laren, by the way, is one of my other starting forwards, mm, and he I also him got up this week. okay. He also got a goal and an assist as well. Did you? Okay. Yeah, I. Uh, 
Yeah, my my roster this last week was was okay, but it didn't have anything. I've got on paper we're we're a very quality team, you know. I feel like we're going to do well this year, but I don't know fantasy wise if we're going to do well. Unfortunately, I mean my my uh, my front three uh, is Dom Dwyer and Fernando Adi were you know very good guys, and then mm-hmm. Kikuta Mane as well from Vancouver. But we well, Adi got you a goal. He did, yeah. So I mean, I got seven points. He he and uh, Clarence Goodson and uh, Bowden from Orlando were my top point. Accumulators. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't be more happy with having Laren up front and Giovinco. And this, mm. these are the games they have. But going back to this Orlando game, what, <laughs> what a thrilling match! Sixty thousand yeah. once again filling the bowl as they did last that's season. What you want? Yep. And uh, that's the type of game that. Yeah, it's a draw, but it's going to feel so much like a win, and it could and that's really what last year felt for them it, too. And it could really lead to something bigger. Mm-hmm. You you picked Orlando to finish very high. In the I Eastern did. Conference. And the great thing about this too is that Orlando did this without any of their DPS. No right. Cacano, no Carino, right. no Moreno. I mean, they they did all of this without... I mean, basically hanging on to Kyle Aaron saying, look, it's only you really right now, so do something. And he did. And how about that? You So many times you see in these sophomore seasons, these players just drop mm-hmm. off from the beginning. Again, we're one game into it. I'm not saying, hey, it's a great yeah. you know, second but, coming. But you're right, though. But what a way to start the season. Exactly. And that's the, I think that's the great part about it. So we both picked Orlando to win that game. Unfortunately, they drew or... Fortunately, they drew, depending on how you look at it. So we don't get a point out of that one. Right. We get a we get a, a, a wrong. The last no. thing I'll say is, is let's also be real here. Not, neither of us think RSL is going to finish really high this year. No, so. which was which is interesting because like a, um, the program that I was listening to again, I'm not going to try to name names because we all everyone's got their own opinions. But the program that I was listening to uh, talking about MLS this last weekend um, mentioned how they think the front three for RSL is probably one of the best in the league, and I was like, really. Like okay, I mean it. It depends on how you look at it. Maybe I just don't. I'm not as familiar with RSL as maybe they are. But the way I was listening to it, and the way they were describing the setting, you know, they've got Plata, they've got Morales who's feeding the ball up. They've got uh, Yuri Morsisian who's back, who used to play with RSL. He's very sure. good. And there's one other guy whose name is escaping me right now. But they're like probably one of the best, probably one of the best, if not the best, front threes with the distributor with Morales behind them in the league. I was like. Okay, sure, maybe. I mean, I know Plot is good regardless of anything sure, he's on. He's sure. going to do good. He's going to well, score goals. Look, I know I'm biased, but Portland... They do. They've got a very a wonderful good front. front three. Their, their midfield is, I still think, the best in the league mm-hmm. from an overall product. So to have the midfield that you have mm-hmm. with the front three that Portland has and Adi, Espria, and, uh, oh my goodness, I'm blanking all of a sudden. Oh, shoot. Who's your other guy? Milano. Lucas yes. Milano. Um, who let's face it, he didn't have a great season as far as goal scoring last year, but he set up opportunities, mm-hmm. and we saw that in their game as well. Kind of jumping ahead here, um, yeah. Portland that was, Columbus. That was the big rematch, right? The MLS Cup rematch yep. repeats itself. Portland two to one. What a Higuain though! What an awesome bicycle kick goal he had for it the was. crew in that game. You can't not appreciate that. You know, a good bicycle kick goal, especially of that nature and being able to see Nat Borcher's face too and a lot of the like post pictures of like him like looking at the like right, going right. mid air he's like oh crap like I was supposed to mark him you know and I'll be fair and I'll say that this game was very exciting it was I mean the ball was going back and forth and back mm-hmm. and forth unfortunately I don't think it was the best soccer that was played Probably but not. it certainly was a very exciting game to watch mm-hmm. and as I said I, you know obviously seeing Portland win 2-1 to one makes it a little bit more exciting that did for help me. yes um, but they showed that at least with this first game, MLS Cup was not a fluke for them. And that is they've, true. they've started 2016 like they finished 2015. That's what you want. And it was a big day, too. They had the extra hype. There was, you know, the uh, the banner coming right. down and so much other. They got their rings and, you know, all the hoopla that goes with winning a championship. So in that regards, obviously, that was what you want. Absolutely. You want that to, to start off on, a, on another foot. You had picked Portland that day, Simon. I did not. I picked the crew. So you got a victory or a point off of right. me on that one. Going back to the highest scoring game, though, of the weekend, the Chicago Fire and NYC FC. A lot of different ways you could look at this game. You could say, well, obviously they're bad teams. Their defenses were not there. There were seven goals scored. Or you can flip it around and say, well, Tommy McNamara scored a ridiculous goal. Nick Disgrew did a fantastic job with some of his goals. We saw some good build-up play from the Chicago Fire as well. And at certain times... Def- it doesn't matter if you have the best defense or not because some of these goals that were scored, even the goalkeepers, as good as they were, had no chance. No, absolutely not. I mean, the first goal of the game, the upper 90 mm-hmm. shot by... First uh, goal of the season. McNam- uh, McNamara. Thank you. Thomas. <laughs> McNamara. Uh, 
you know, he, he cuts the ball back and forth and then sends it up with his right foot, bending up into the upper 90. Yep. No keeper in the world no. is going to be able to stop that. As a forward, that's probably one of the best goals to score. If, you're, if you can get it back onto your strong foot and try to still push it to the far upper corner. <sighs> now, how, how real is City looking? I mean, this is a Chicago Fire team that it's going to take half a season for them to find their way. It is. And I... I I told somebody the other day, I was talking to Corey Plath yesterday, actually. I had dinner with him and his wife, and I said, hey, you know, I'm, we got to get down to some fire games this year because I'm excited to go watch some teams beat the fire because I'm not going to go to a fire game to watch the fire. I want to go see these other teams that they're going right. to play. And I, I mean, I meant that seriously, though, because as you mentioned, the fire, they've got a long way to go. And they don't have a big draw in terms of like, oh, come watch all these great players play. Sure. They sure. don't. They just don't right now. It's, no, that, it's... That's one of the seasons they're just going to have. Well, I would have gone to watch Harry Ship play, but... I'm going to have to wait till Montreal comes now to watch you're Harry really, Shipley. You're really sore about I that. I just think it was a stupid move well, I, from an I, organizational ultimately standpoint. I, agree with you, yes. <laughs> I know we had our 50 50, yes. but I agree with you. So I, so I picked NYCFC. You picked the fire. So I got that that point. But they, uh, they did it without Frankie Lampard as well. And um, so in that regards. Maybe there's still more to come. Maybe, you know, maybe, he, or maybe he, there's less to come. <laughs> more than likely, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so your big game of the day. My big new, game of the new, day? New England, New Houston. England and Houston. So as I mentioned to you, Simon, and you you were busy coaching futsal during mm-hmm. the Portland game. I was busy doing another broadcast during the Revs game. So I'm partially looking at my phone, trying to also do everything else for the other broadcast. And I see three minutes in that Diego Fagundes scored a goal. And I was like, oh, well, shoot. I'm like, this is this is good. All right, fantastic. And not did I, I did not realize at that point in time what kind of goal he scored. It's one thing to say, you get a little no- push notification saying goal, you know, third minute, whatever. Oh, cool, whatever. Sure. You go back, you watch the goal, and it's arguably one of the best goals you're going to see probably all season long. A shot from outside the box, bending to the far post, lower keeper can't get to it, in traffic. That's the type of goal that you need to have happen from a young up-and-coming player like Fagundes. He's 21. He's a, what, a four-, five-year veteran now in the league. That's the type of goal you want from your front man like that. And you're talking about a shot from about 30 yards out. About that, yeah. In traffic. In, in traffic. traffic, yeah. It's not like he was just sitting out there by himself. And I will say, too, you know, as a as a quasi-tactician, mm. I'd love the build-up on that as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't just like the ball came out of the air, fell to his feet, and nope. he suddenly he's like, oh, hey, there's a ball. It was it was a great run of play by the uh, Revolution working it up the field. They worked it up quickly, and it was in the air almost the whole time, but they worked it up. Uh, a great pass from New England's uh, own side to uh, Fagundes and pff, mm-hmm. slams it into the goal. And it's interesting, though, too, because... Seeing quotes from Jay Heaps after the game, he said that after Diego, sc- he was thrilled that Diego scored so early. He said, but after that, he said the entire team plan was out the window. Oh, is so that right? So the team right? played entirely different the rest of the game. He's like, not necessarily on purpose, like not on purpose, because you go up one nil three minutes into a game, not expecting to go up that early on the road in an environment you normally don't win very much in. It changes your entire perception, I think, of the game. And then sure. it just kind of got a little crazy after that with them letting in a goal right before halftime um, and then going down 2-1 quickly after that. And then Charlie Davis, it was nice to see him get on the score sheet, even though if it was kind of a weird goal. But uh, never say die, though, for the Revs, I think, is really where it comes down to because, I mean, there was the 93rd minute in Diego right. Kobayashi from Fagundes. Fagundes had assists on the other two goals of the day, too. So he was one of the MLS Team of the Week honors guys this week. So that was very sure. good for him. So is Diego somebody you think is a good pickup for fantasy? Or is this, is this, um, is this more of a one-off deal and he'll be... <laughs> I'd like to say yes. I'd like to say he's a good guy because in terms of New England, uh, we didn't see Ag- – Agadella was on the bench. And he only played for 21 minutes. Um, Kellen Rowe played for the first half, and then he got hurt. Scotty Caldwell filled in in the second half and looked fairly good and connected on 96% of his passes, so that was really, really good to see from him. But if you're going to look for – if you're looking for every team's goal scorer – the ball is going to go through Lee Wynn or it's going to go through Fagundes. Yeah, so At the end of the day, if right. the ball is coming off of someone's foot, I mean, you'd like to think Charlie Davies and Agadello too, but Davies is not consistent. Fagundes is going to get the ball a lot during the game because he's fast and he's a dynamic playmaker. So, yes. And I will say that somebody on the other side, uh, Giles Barnes from yeah. Houston. Who, the new man who, with the captain's who, armband. That's right. He's. I think he's definitely somebody that if you're looking for a – he's not going to be – the cheapest, but uh, perhaps mm-hmm. less expensive option. Yes, because... Definitely be, and Will Bruin as well, who yeah. tends to get a goal or an assist almost every game, it seems it's like. It's ridiculous. He's kind of... He's a little annoying in that regard. And Andrew Wenger even got a goal right. out of that, right. too. And it was like, who? Didn't he play for... Wasn't he like a bomb out for Philly? Like, he was... Like, he's actually fairly decent, so... Yeah, but is that on him or is that on Philly? It's... <laughs> 
Exactly. So, Speaking of Philly, yes, we both picked Houston, though, in that game, so neither of us got not got anything out of that. I didn't pick a single draw last week. Neither of us did. And I thought about that, and I was going to ask you about it, but I'm like, hey, he didn't pick a draw? Yeah, opening weekend? Yeah. Maybe that's why. I was like, I'm, I'm going to go big. Why not? It was opening weekend. You know, there are so many games to choose from. You know, you kind of have to go big for it. So, um, but yeah, I, from, from the Revs' perspective, though, they play DC United this weekend. Um, so we'll see what kind of happens with that. FC Dallas beat uh, the Philadelphia Union 2 0. Not really surprised. The people that were supposed to step up and do things did Fabian Castillo, Mauro, um, Mauro Diaz, and. Well, Jesse yeah, Gonzalez, their goalkeeper. Yeah. Right? Uh, who is my starting goalkeeper in mm, fantasy. And I, as long as he's healthy, I'm telling you folks, he's the I guy will be to playing do it. him. He's the guy to have. And I unfortunately started Bobby Shuttleworth this last weekend, so conceding three goals I think only got yeah. me one point. So yeah. it kind of hurts. Uh, earthquakes and Rapids. Earthquakes took that game 1-0. Not much to talk about there. Wondolowski got a goal, as he always seems to do. He does. Um, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's doing. Yep. And they're playing against Colorado, who I still think – they may. They, I'm going back and looking at my picks that saying they'll be number six, and I'm like, am I doing that just to do that thing of calling Someone's an upset? Someone's got to be that you know, guy. To just so if they do it's make it, I can like, say C. It, it's not bad, but at the same time, it's kind of like, but why? Yeah. Well, you know, they they'll have Timmy Howard there at some point. They'll sure. have now. They'll have Jermaine Jones after uh, a mm-hmm. few more games because he's still suspended from For last yelling season. at Mark right. Geiger. He brought it upon himself. Uh, very exciting game up in Canada. Though. I got to watch this game, actually. The one game of the whole week that I actually got to watch. I watched probably about three-fourths of the game uh, when it was all said and done. And I just need to take 30 seconds out of my day to say that Die- uh, Diego <laughs> Didier Drogba is stupid. Do you know why he didn't play in this game? Yeah, he's, he, he's said he will not play on turf. He's not playing the first, I think it's like six games of the year. Because, Are they all on turf? Because they're on turf. Well, now you say that's stupid. But I will say I understand I, it. He's got, but he's got knee problems. I know that, but you are the focal point of Montreal. I think he's playing with Sacramento right I, now. I understand. I understand. <laughs> However, you signed the guy. You sure. knew what you were getting, and I I would be shocked if this I was not part of the games. conversation. It's at least four or six games. But he's out longer than because I saw that I saw that he was you know out for a couple of games. I was like, oh gosh, what did he do now? And I was like, oh, he just doesn't want to play on turf. And I, and I, I get it. I get it, Drogba. I totally hey, get it. I played on what? turf too. It's a pain. Henri, there were a few games that he set out because he was yeah. concerned about his knees. Beckham did the same thing. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not unusual. What's unusual is that a player actually came out and said, not even trying. No, like he's not gonna he's not gonna do it. Right. So my question is, if Montreal ends up going to MLS Cup 2016 and it's on a turf field as you can be like nah I'm good and it's not play that's that's a great question like, Baxter <laughs> right you know when, when is it good enough right? or a US Open Cup final and I, or I'd say even even more important is if it's a semifinal series mm-hmm. more important is, yeah if they have to go to Seattle right or if they have to go to wherever well they wouldn't go to Seattle, not Seattle the if they have to go to New England or if they you know, which, which he didn't play in when they played in uh, late in the season he didn't he didn't play in those games and and at the same time I have no problem with him complaining mm-hmm. about playing on turf fields. Hey, yeah. my Portland Timbers play on turf. And I know, I know, uh, well, they used to have a football have team a turf playing field? there. Yeah. Really? Now, granted, it's rated as. It's a different style of right, turf. Right, right. Yeah. But it's still turf. Sure. Regardless, turf it's still turf. turf. Yep. And I know it gets rainy up in Cascadia, mm-hmm. but when you got these owners who are billionaires, they can afford Put to have some a grass field. down. Honestly. It's not rocket science. So we both both picked Vancouver in this game, and uh, to be to be fair, Vancouver had the ball way more than Montreal did, but Montreal made the most of the chances they had. They did. Ignacio they did. Piatti with a beautiful slalom goal, and just looked very much in charge of the entire game. Absolutely. Sporting Kansas City, Seattle. We both picked Seattle in that game. Sporting Kansas City got the victory. We didn't really think they were going to because the question that we both asked a lot in the last show. Who's who's sporting is it this year? Well, not only that, but let's face it, Seattle played most of the game with ten men, so they actually did quite well. Did I just say Seattle did quite well? They did quite well, uh, you know, almost holding on there, almost pulling it back. This as is well. for you, Simon. No, you don't say that. You don't say Seattle did well. Hey, it just goes to show that even though I'm a Timbers fanatic, <laughs> I'm still even keel on the True. show. Uh, but yeah, so. Um, O'Neill Fisher was the one who got the red card. So, and that was early in the first half, I think like the 20th, maybe 30th minute. Oof. And it was, you didn't see any Seattle players complain about it. Even Fisher didn't complain about it. Mm-hmm. Studs up, he jumped up. It was <laughs> such little, an easy call. The ref's right there. Easy call for the ref. Yeah. And uh, Sporting KC starts the season 1-0 mm-hmm. or, or 1-0. 
uh, by beating Seattle in Seattle. Exactly. And one other thing just to mention really fast going back to an old game, that Orlando and RSL game was 10 on 10. By the oh, way. is that two, right? There two red cards right. in that game. I think that's kind of why it finished the way it did. Uh, the last game, uh, we both took Seattle in that game, unfortunately, so we, neither of us got points for that one. Uh, let me say one thing. If, if, uh, if you're still looking for a goalkeeper, if Tim Malia continues to play the way he did in this game, yes. he's a great pickup for fantasy. Absolutely. All right, now the last game of the weekend, uh, and then we're going to take a break fast and then come back and offer predictions, I believe, 50-50, all that stuff, and then we got to get out of here. But uh, the last game of the weekend was the Galaxy and DC United. <laughs> and I, 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 we, we chatted on the phone yesterday, Simon. We did, which is why I'm laughing. Uh, and I thought this was the funniest thing. And this just proves social media is just a beautiful thing. So I'm on Twitter before I'm going to bed, and I was like, I'm not going to... It was on Unimas or Telemundo or whatever. Unimas. Yep, Unimas, Unimas. Dos, maybe. I don't know. Either way, it was on one of those channels, and so I couldn't watch it. And uh, I'm watching on Twitter right before halftime, and Lamar Nagel scores a goal, and everyone's just destroying the galaxy. Ashley Cole is old. He's slow. Which How he could is. he let Which that he goal in? He's awful. <laughs> Which he is. And I'm like, oh, good. DC is <laughs> going to pull an upset. Fantastic. I'm going to bed. Good night, world. Wake up the next morning. Galaxy win 4-1. And I'm like, oh, God. What's Twitter saying? Go to Twitter. Ashley Cole turns in a remarkable <laughs> perf- second half did. performance. He did, yeah. Mike McGee, the man on fire like the galaxy. True title contenders. Bruce Arena is a genius for all these great players he signed. I'm like, make up your mind. And then... Then, and then all the LA fans went, oh, that's right, it was DC. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> ah, Billamy no, was not I, playing. I don't want to take away from the second half that LA played. I mean, goal in the 54th, 64th, 83rd, 87th minute, Mike McGee they looked good. looking like the MVP they he was two or three years ago. Um, but they did. They were very flat in the first half, and they decided to wake up and, and play a little bit. Robbie Keane getting his uh, PK his, goal as well. token PK goal. Um, He's good at what he does. Legit still playing. Legit's one of those players yep. I have uh, in my fantasy. I league. saw that, yeah. Uh, he played fantastic. He came out a little early as well. But, yeah, L.A., I, I'm still not going to say that they're for real because it was against D.C. United, who continues to be the team that I don't understand how Ben Olsen still has a job. <laughs> I really don't. I don't understand how he's still the head coach of D.C. United. I'd agree. I completely agree with you on that one. Yeah, they didn't do much. They're old. That's one of the reasons why they didn't finish in my top six in the Eastern Conference this year. They are an old, underperforming, underwhelming team. And I will be shocked if DC finishes in the top six this year. Pretty honestly. sure we both picked the Galaxy on this one. Yes, we did. So we both finished four and six in our predictions for this upcoming week of soccer. So How, our, did, how did fantasy finish, though, Baxter? Uh, I think you uh, I think you did okay. Uh, you finished in first in our fantasy league. I finished in last. Okay. I think my team only got 41 points. Now, so. to be fair, I said I'd like you to bring that up simply because that'll be the only week I'm ever in first yes. place. <laughs> I know. Now that I actually realized it, I'm like, okay, now that I know Simon beat me one week, I got to get back after it. All right, we're going to take one quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the show. Predict I believe 50 50, all that stuff. And remember, if you want to get up the show too, on Twitter at 2 Upfront Soccer at Baxter Colburn at Simon Proven. Back with more right after this on 2 Upfront.
Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Baxter Colburn. And I'm Simon Provan. All right. Remember, if you want to get out the show on Facebook, Two Up Front Soccer, and on Twitter. Twitter. At Two Up Front Soccer. And at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. <laughs> Not enough coffee. Four hours of sleep. Third shift here. Hashtag, get me, the, get me to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> Oh, gosh. All right, Simon. Uh, 50-50 time for us. Uh, the way it works, we take on a topic in the sports soccer world. We each get 45 seconds to debate about it, usually one side or the other, and then we turn it over to you folks to let us know your thoughts about it. So please let us know who you side with. You can either do it on Facebook, send us a message, post on our wall, or tweet at us. And don't forget, we're revamped, not revamped, our new website, yes. twoupfrontsoccer.wix.com slash twoupfrontsoccer. Yes. Uh, go ahead and visit there. We always post a couple of days beforehand. We preview what the next show is yep. going to be about. You can go there and listen to past shows. You can see guests that we've had on. Yep, interviews. So interviews. today's interviews will be on there as well. Exactly. So Baxter does a wonderful job of excavating, excav- uh, exporting, ex- uh, cutting uh, them up, something, slicing and dicing. Yes, yeah, slicing I'm and the sous- I'm the sous- Basically, chef. what I'm saying is he, he takes the extracts. That's ah, what I'm trying to say. Extracts the, the interview from the show, and we actually post just the interview. Then, so you don't have to search through the whole show. Even though we'd love you to listen to the entire show, doing you a favor by uh, going to that page. If you look under the interviews tab, you can listen to all these awesome guests that we've had on. Yes, indeed. But anyways, uh, back to the fifty fifty. Yes. So. Jermaine Jones signed by Colorado Rapids. What a guy. For about $3 million less than he was asking. That's... And, and much less than New England apparently even offered him. Part of the rumor is, is he wanted to be closer to home. His home is in L.A. His kids and wife are there. So he, he signed with Colorado. So our 50-50 this week is, is this a good thing for Colorado? Or is it uh, a terrible thing? Mm. Or w- whatever else you want to throw sure. in Do you want to go first? Sure, want to I go can first? go first. That's fine. All right. All right, so 45 seconds on the clock. Baxter, go. All right, I think it's an awful idea for Colorado, honestly, because you don't bring a player in this late in his career who obviously has issues with how the league functions, especially with the referees, and who is already suspended because of his spats with the refs. You also don't bring a player in who the first player, uh, first press conference he has completely turns everything around and takes shots right back at his old team and com- comments about how poor the playing conditions were and a lot of the people that he was around as well. So it's obvious that he is really only focused on progressing himself in his career and thinks very highly of himself saying, well, I've got a great at- I've got a great attitude. I've got I'm a good person to be around and the team will benefit for signing me. So he seems way more full of himself at this point in his career. He's not the same guy in New England signed a couple years ago Colorado <laughs> have fun with that one time's up I just wanted to make sure we actually got to 45 seconds yes sorry. so you get a little bit of that's all right a little bit of that's what I want a little bit sorry. of stoppage time there yes, or no did. no le- uh, ref called it early ref called that's it early it yes that's my fault all right uh, so other side for you Simon are you ready I am ready and begin so I don't think it's a, a bad signing for Colorado, and it mainly comes down to money. Colorado has not signed many big players. We do know that Tim Howard is more than likely coming over. That's the word, um, yep. and, and yes, Jermaine Jones is getting up there in age, but obviously he still does a good job for the U.S. national team, mm-hmm. especially if he's played in the position that he's meant to be played in. And it's not like Colorado is downgrading by bringing in Jermaine Jones. True. In fact, Jones doesn't even count as a DP because this is the beauty of the mm-hmm. targeted allocation money, TAM money. So uh, it's not too big of a risk. And I, to me, that's why this is a good signing. He's somebody that they can work through the midfield with. Uh, he's He can be an upgrade to the midfield that they have. And yeah, he may be off the field a little bit uh, uppity, but on the field, he does the job. It's Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to argue... You know, one way or another, because he is a very veteran, experienced player, and he's going to help the younger guys on that team. It's funny, you know. I was reading an interview with him in which he was completely misinformed, talking about uh, he was talking to his friends over in the Bundesliga, <laughs> and and saying that it's ridiculous that it, even whatever league that he would sign with, he'd still FIFA would hold up that six game ban, and mm. he and you know the players. He was saying that the players in the Bundesliga were saying, "No, that's ridiculous. You'd be able to play every single game." If you dig further into it, you actually find out that, yes, indeed, whatever suspension somebody got in one league it carries over. Carries over good. no matter where it is in That's the world. That's good. You need to do that. All right, Simon. So our predictions for this upcoming week, 10 games again, which is fantastic. No, 10 games. What? Not on the same day. Calm down. Oh, okay. It's nine on one day. What? Instead of 10. Totally different. No, it's not nine. <laughs> it's uh, one on Friday. Three on Sunday and whatever the mathematical thing is for the rest of those. Seven games. on Saturday. Seven on Saturday. Yes. Something like yes. that. Math and stuff. 
Math and stuff. All right, first game, Orlando City uh, and Chicago. This one is in Orlando. Who you got? Uh, I think there's still no caca for this one, but Orlando is hungry. Uh, Orlando's going to be one of those teams I'm going to have a hard time betting against this season, so I'm going to go for them. I agree with you on that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... No, I'm, I'm going to take Orlando. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll okay. take Orlando on this one. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, the Revs and DC, New England's first home game of the year. They're coming off a 3-3 draw. DC's coming off a 4-1 sl- Smack around fest. Uh, I'm gonna go, to, I go with the Revs on this one, honestly. I will too. I don't know if uh, Bill Hamid will be back in goal yet, honestly, for know. DC. And that was one of the big things too for DC United is mm-hmm. uh, they had uh, Dykstra in there as their their backup keeper as Hamid is coming back from injury. Yep. Uh, regardless, actually, if Hamid was in here, I'd call this a draw. But yeah. Part of me for not knowing. But I'll take Revolution. All right, Montreal and the Red Bulls. Yeah, this should be fun a, game. This should be a good game. This is going to be up in Canada in Montreal. Listen, New York. If they figure out how to score, they could draw this game. But I'm going to take Montreal. Mm, okay, uh, I am going actually with New York on this one. Um, I think that they're going to be hungry after their other game uh, from last week, and they want to get after it. And why not? Up in Montreal, it could be a fun time to do that. Uh, RSL and Seattle. Uh, RSL hosting. Uh, the Sounders, um, supposedly RSL's got one of the best front three in the league from what I've heard. Seattle, on the other hand, they're probably a little upset that they lost opening day. So, uh, but it's in RSL. Rio Tinto's a hard place to win at times, except for the last couple of years. But um, I'm going to have to go with RSL on this one. Yeah, I'm going to take a draw hmm. on this one. Okay. Uh, for the exact reasons you said, it, it is at Rio Tinto. Uh, Seattle's going to be hungry, though. They've got a great goalkeeper. Well, yep. both teams have good goalkeepers in this. And uh, I almost feel like we're going to see jo- Jordan Morris get, get a on goal. The score sheet. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised against Nicky Romando. Next game, we got Colorado taking on the LA Galaxy in Colorado. This is my surprise pick. I'm choosing the Rapids. The uh, reason is, history-wise, Colorado, when they play in Colorado, tends to give the Galaxy a little bit of trouble. True. Um, I don't think that was true in the playoffs either Two years ago or so. Either way, uh, I'm going. Colorado with, was I'm going the playoffs the two years ago. I don't know <laughs> Some, something or maybe you know. A couple years was, ago, I think it was an end of the season. Maybe it was last end of the season where Colorado played a bit of a spoiler with the oh, seedings. Yeah. I think that's what it was. I think you're right. Either way, I'm, uh, that's my upset of the week is taking okay. Colorado, Colorado over the Colorado over the Galaxy. Very nice. Mine is later on in the week or later on in the schedule here. Columbus and Philly. You, wait, wait, wait. Who are you picking? Oh, I'm sorry. I took LA. Okay. LA in that one. Columbus and Philly. Columbus hosting. Um, now Columbus's first home game of the year as well, so they are going to be looking to keep the fans engaged, and why not? So I've got the crew winning this game. Yeah, I do as well. I think it's, this is too easy of a pick. Philly's just nothing about Philly is sexy to me this year. It's just nothing. I yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Houston and FC Dallas. Always a fun game. Battle of Texas. Uh, FC Dallas, the away team, but it's still interstate play. It is, and they uh, they have their own trophy between the, them. They do in this uh, they do, in the series. Do. I've got FC Dallas. Yeah, this is a tough one for me. Even um, though Fabian Castillo is kind of. Is banged up right now. Yeah, he's he's probably out, but Max Rudy came in and filled and in quite well. Me, yeah. Scored a goal even. Um, I hate to do this again, Baxter, but I think I'm going to go with a draw that on makes this. Sense. Uh, the, Gonzalez is in goal, but Houston has some goal scorers. They do. And I think we may see uh, Giles Barnes get on the score sheet again. Um, and I don't think this is going to be as much of a high-scoring affair as we think. I don't think these games traditionally are. Right. So right. I, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, so unfortunately, honestly. I'm taking another draw okay. on this one. Not a problem at all. Sporting Kansas City hosting the Vancouver Whitecaps. Vancouver coming off of a 3-2 loss. Sporting come off of, coming off of a 1-0 win. Sporting hosting their first home game of the season as well. Who do you think in this one, Simon? I'm taking Vancouver. Are you? Okay. Yeah. My, yeah. My, I, I watched the way they played against Montreal. They seemed to be better organized than Sporting. Hmm. Um, sporting obviously took advantage as well as they should with, with playing against 10 men in Seattle. But I just I still don't know who they are, and I, I don't True. have faith to pick them. That's No, I'd have to agree with you on that one. Yeah, Vancouver definitely gets my pick this week. They moved the ball, as you mentioned, against Montreal incredibly well. They had a majority of the possession. They are a much faster team than Sporting is as well. So until we see more production from Sporting, and I'm fine taking a, an incorrect on this one if Sporting decides to show up and do right, well, but right. um, I haven't seen enough to, to believe that yet, exactly. honestly. Uh, NYC FC against Toronto is... Uh, Sunday. Sunday. ESPN2 game at uh, 4 o'clock Central, 5 yep. o'clock Eastern. At Yankee Stadium. 
at Yankee Stadium, um, they Josh Saunders. He let in three goals. Not a good goalie. No. Uh, when you got Giovinco continuing to play like he is and the the whole TFC team playing as well organized as they are, I'm picking TFC for this oh, yeah. game. Okay. Sounds good. Well, this is my, my, my upset. I've got NYCFC. All right. This game. I, you know, actually, I have no problem with that either. I, I can easily see this being a, yeah. a city win. But if I'm basing it purely off of what I saw last week, i got to take Toronto. Exactly. And then the final game, Portland and San Jose, Simon. What this do you is, got? This is actually a tough one. Mm-hmm. These these are always uh, – these are not pretty games. I'll tell you that right offhand. No. The Portland-San Jose – well, many games with San Jose are not pretty. <laughs> That's When's the last time you could say they played beautiful, fluid soccer? Yeah, although, you know, they, they tend – they do have their games where – where you wish you tuned in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, hey, let's face it. Portland didn't play the prettiest of soccer against the crew, but they, did. they, got, the they got the win. That's all that matters. And uh, I'm still staying with Portland on this okay. one. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to take San Jose um, because it's in San Jose, and sometimes it is, like you mentioned, it's not pretty soccer, but there's something about Chris Wondolowski where they just – Sure. That's a good X factor to have in the back of your mind. You never know. So let us know your thoughts about this upcoming week for predictions as well. You can do it on Facebook, uh, Two Up Front, and then Two Up Front Soccer on Twitter, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. All right, Simon, our show always gets away from us, but we are at the final segment of our show. So as those of you that follow the show and or maybe are new to the broadcast know, we do an I Believe segment at the end of the show that allows Simon and I to offer one uh, prediction about the upcoming week, something that's happened in the soccer world, whatever. It's kind of, it's an open-ended whatever. We can do whatever right. we want with it. Yep. It's great. So uh, I went first in 50-50, so would you like to lead off for I Believe? Sure, I will lead off in the I Believe. Uh, what do I want to do for my belief? See, that's the mm, question. I believe that, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually going to go right out and say this. I kind of hinted at it earlier in the show, but I'm going to call it now. I believe that the U.S. women's team will lift gold yes. at the Olympics. Okay. Very nice. All after, right. the, after the She Believes Cup and how they dominated that, that cup, I uh, wouldn't be surprised. Obviously, it'll depend on the draw, but I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. to see a U.S.-Germany final once again. That is true. Um, I believe that uh, Orlando City's Kyle Laren is going to uh, duplicate his performance from last season as Rookie of the Year, and uh, he will obviously he can't be Rookie of the Year again this year, but he can equal his performance in terms of goals and assists scored. So I liked what I saw opening day, and I think Orlando realized that he wants to be a focal point of the attack, especially with Kaká back and forth with injuries. He's going to get the ball a lot more. He's a very clinical, young, talented forward. He's going to get the ball. He's going to score. So, Baxter, we usually preview who's coming on next week. Yes. I, I do want to say before we before we go off air here, we don't technically have somebody lined up just Officially, yet. Yes. But I want I, let me let me tease everybody out there. We've been in contact with a lot of different teams mm-hmm. and a lot of different leagues. And folks, all I can tell you is make sure you keep tuning in to two up front because we will have some exciting guests coming yes. on the air. That's very true. We can uh, we can tell you that they are they're from leagues like you know, the NWSL and MLS as well. So that's all we'll say. We'll let you know more from that. And uh, we have to get Chris Blakely back on the program. We sure do. And make sure you check out, if you want to know who's coming on a couple of days beforehand, again, make sure you check out our webpage, which is where we list those previews. That is, it's kind of a wonky one, but it's twoupfrontsoccer.wix.com slash twoupfrontsoccer. Absolutely. And remember, you can find us also on Fridays on Sports Radio America from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on sportsradioamerica.com. Tune in and on the Tune in app as well, and then on demand on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com as well. We are on uh, Facebook, Two Up Front, on Twitter, at Two Up Front Soccer, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. And you can always email the show anytime you want to at Two Up Front Soccer at gmail.com. Thank you so much to Wells Thompson for joining us today and for Roberto Balestrini as well. Those in- interviews will be posted on Spreaker and on our webpage as well, so go and check those out. Wells Thompson's interview, especially, very powerful and encouraging interview, so go and Absolutely. check that out. Yes. All right, he is Simon Provan. I'm Baxter Colburn. Thanks so much for spending your your day with us. We will see you all again next time with our manager being the one above. We are two up front.